Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and today we're going to make a necklace using products from the Bargain Bead Box July 2022 edition. So, first of all, our encouraging word for today is Isaiah 46.4, I will protect and carry you all the days of your life. I like that one, it's comforting. Okay, so, if you want to make this necklace, here's what you're going to need. I'm using some of these cubes, these crackle agate cubes from the Bargain Bead Box. I'm using these really pretty rondelles from the Bargain Bee box. And then I've got here a couple of rings. Now these are from my own stash. These are 16 millimeter closed rings. I have a lobster clasp, a jump ring for the lobster to clasp onto, a jump ring to attach the lobster to our necklace with, two crimp beads, two clamshell connectors, two of these little cord ends. Now these are little fold over cord ends and a couple of little extra jump rings. I'm not sure that we'll need them, but we might. So if we do, then we'll have them. All right. Um, I have some of the starfish bead from beads from the bargain bead box. I have the fan or the uh, seashell pendant here. It looks like a fan to me, <laughs> a seashell pendant. And this um, tube bead, both from the Bargain Bead Box this month. And then I have some of these guys, um, these little marbled beads from the Bargain Bead Box. Not sure that I'm gonna use this many. I may not even use any, but we'll see. I uh, just wanted to pull them out just in case. I have some one millimeter leather. This is kind of like a silver color. I got this from Antique Cord on Etsy, and I have a piece of 20 gauge wire. This is just um, silver artistic wire, and I've got about, I don't know, nine inches or so. And then I've got to run and grab it. I guess I neglected to bring it in here. Um, a piece of bead stringing wire, probably about the same nine inches or so of bead stringing wire. So let me go grab that um, seven strand bead stringing wire in silver. Let me go grab that. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my bead stringing wire. All right, um, and that's all that you're going to need, I believe, and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is work with our little fan or our little seashell pendant and beads. These are going to be the focal for this necklace. So I'm going to take my 20 gauge wire here. And I'm going to create a focal. So I don't really need to put my bead on just yet. I could, but if I do, it's just going to slide around. So I'm going to create a wrapped loop here. And to do this, I'm just going to bend this 90 degrees. I probably, I probably don't need quite that much. Let me see here. Probably don't need quite that much. Okay, actually, I'm going to change this up here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bead on, and I'm going down to about the middle of the wire here for a little bit. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave about this much out one end because I'm just going to need to make a wrap loop on this end. But on this end, I'm going to try to wrap the bead. So what I want to do here is bend this at 90 degrees. Just like you're making a normal wrapped loop, I'm going to go up and over. I'm going to rotate my plier up and come around. Okay, so there I have my little loop. I'm going to grab that with my plier and I'm going to wrap a couple of times. Just like this. And then I'm going to start going up the bead. So I'm going to push my bead down with one hand. And I'm just going to take this and kind of swirl it around the bead. And you want to make sure that you push your bead down so that it is not leaving a gap there. And it's kind of hard, but just, you can do it. Just pull your wire tight. Wrap this, let me do this a little bit more down here to the bottom. And it is very fiddly. It's hard to hold the bead and wrap the wire, but just do the best you can. <laughs> okay. Now, when I get my wire wrapped around my bead and I get up here to the top, I'm just going to take it right here. Let's see. Let me pull 
pull these down just a little bit, pull them tight, okay, and now I'm going to go right here around this piece of wire and I'm just going to wrap just a couple of times enough to um, just secure it on there, okay, and then I'm just going to trim it off. Just like that and tuck this in. Now I'm going to make a wrapped loop on this end for the other part, my pendant. And we can adjust these wires around a little bit here in a minute if you want to. But I'm just going to do the same thing, bend 90 degrees. Come up and over, rotate this up, come under, and then grab this and just wrap and this will kind of cover up the wraps that you did already and you can do it really neat if you want or you can do it messy I tend to like kind of the messy look with wrapped loops trim it off tuck it in and I'm just going to straighten up this loop a little bit just like that and there we have it so we've got a cute little focal, and I just wanted to add, I liked adding the wire to this. I just felt like that it just added something kind of cute to it to have the wire kind of wrapping around. Okay, now we're going to take our um, seashell pendant here, and this guy, and actually, did I mention a head pin? I hope I did. You need a head pin. <laughs> I'm sorry if I didn't mention that. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. Um, so we're just going to take this little starfish bead. And again, we're going to make a wrapped loop. Okay, just like this. Come up and over. Rotate up. And I am making sure that the wrapped loop comes out the top. So if you see here in these starfish beads, there's a V here with a hole. And then it comes out the top of this leg. And I want to make sure... That my wrapped loop comes out the top part it just I think it looks better you can do it the other way if you want but I think it looks better coming out the top and I'm just gonna wrap just a couple times on this I don't want a big huge wrap loop on that I just wanted to secure it okay. trim that off and go ahead and tuck this right in so it's not snagging anything. Okay, so here's what we've got. Now, I probably need to get a bigger jump ring. Let's see if the six millimeter one will work. I have the six millimeter jump ring here. This is the one I was gonna hook my lobster on with, but I think I'm gonna have to grab another one. We need to use it for this. Oh, this does work, okay. I was afraid it would be too small, but it's not. So I'm just taking the jump ring. I'll have to grab another one for my lobster. Or I can use one of those tiny ones. And I just wanted to hang the starfish bead right in front of the seashell pendant. And this is going to be our focal for this necklace. Okay. So then we're going to take our bead stringing wire. Let me scoot over just a bit. Okay. And we're going to put our focal right on it. Just like this. Now, if it is hanging crooked, like mine is, you can grab this ring here and then take this one and twist it where you want it to be, okay? So I'm holding the top one still. I'm just going to twist the bottom one around a little, and that should make it hang right. Yeah, it does. Okay, so now we're just going to bead this up. Um, so I'm going to use a couple of the little sparkly rondelles first. Probably two on each side. Let's just dump those out because I'm probably going to use most of them. And I do have a matching pair of earrings to go with this. Um, I'll be doing the tutorial for that here soon. Okay, so I've got those two. Let's do... Do we want to do a starfish next? That's pretty cute, actually. Let's do the starfish next. And it does matter how you put these on. I mean, I guess it doesn't if you don't mind them being different. 
Um, but if you want them to lay the same, you need to kind of pay attention to how you put them on because um, they do have, like I said, the the um, wire will come out the V part here and the leg part here. So if you want them to lay the same, you just kind of need to pay attention to that. It doesn't really, I mean, I don't think it really matters that much, but just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> and then we're going to do a little rondelle in between each one. Uh, we might do two rondelles because I want to do this cube bead next. And I don't want him to be bumping up against the starfish's leg. And then we'll do our cubes. These are so pretty. Okay, so just like that. Um, I will do a rondelle. And probably another couple of starfish. Or do I want to bring in one of these? Let's look at the speed here. Yeah, that's pretty good. These are large. These um, marbled beads. And I'm trying to pull out a couple that have a lot of white in them here for this. They're like, I think they're 10 millimeters. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to use them down on this part or not. But I think they look pretty good. Then I'll do a rondelle on each side. Okay, and then do I want to do another cube? I think I do. I'm going to do a couple more cubes and then starfish. So a cube there. And a cube over here. Then I'll do another rondelle on each side. And then we'll do the starfish. The bead mat is moving. This is not the optimal filming. I had to move my filming from out in the bead room where I have been filming to in here because Chris is very loud. <laughs> and Every video I was trying to film, I was having to refilm because he's going in and out of doors and slamming doors and talking to the animals and talking on the phone, and he's just very loud. So I was having to film and refilm and then refilm, and I was getting very frustrated. So I thought, I'm going to have to move this operation behind closed doors. So I just moved in the bedroom. Um... It's not the best. I'm on my vanity trying to film, but at least it's quiet for the most part. All right. So there we have that. Let's do one rondelle per side. And then I think I will try to do another of these bigger marble beads. And then another rondelle on each side. Actually two. I'm going to do two here and then we're going to finish this off and add our leather. Okay, so I've got two rondelles per side there. All right, we didn't end up using all those, did we? Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my rings here. rings and my crimps and my lobsters okay and I'm going to crimp this right onto the ring so actually I'm not I'm going to crimp it onto the lobster or the lobster is going to hook right onto the ring I'm going to have to go grab some more jump rings here in a minute okay this is what I didn't figure on for some reason okay like I said I had to move my whole location so it's I was trying to bring everything in here and I just was having a hard time with it. Okay, so I've got my crimp bead. I'm just going to crimp it down right here on the wire very tightly. Okay, it's not going to move. I'm going to bring my lobster up and close it over the crimp just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So put my lobster on, put my crimp on. Now you want to make sure that there's no wire showing, so make sure all your beads are scooted down. So 
going to crimp him down right in there, nice and tight. Tug on it to make sure it's not going to come loose. That's good and tight. And we're going to trim this right off. I think we are. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> My uh, cutters are very dull. All of them are. Okay, and close this lobster. And there you have it. Now, we're going to attach this right to our ring with the jump rings. Close it up really well. Make sure I got that closed good. I did not. I didn't think I did. There we go, that's better. Okay, and attach the other one. So just like this. Okay, and there we have it. So that's what we've got so far. Now, we're going to take our leather. So what you need to do is you need to measure where you want, how long you want this to lay on your own self if you're making it for you. Okay, so I know that these kind of necklaces, I don't like to be super long. I like them to be about 24 inches total, so 12 inches per side. So I'm going to put my ruler down here, and right now I have about seven and a half inches. So I need about four and a half inches more to make my uh, length. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my leather here, and I'm going to wrap with some wire, but I need to go grab some more because I used all my wire down on the bottom. So um, I'm going to go grab some more wire. We're going to make a little wire wrap here that will kind of match this. And I'm going to grab a couple more jump rings as well. I'll be right back. Okay, so I did grab another piece of wire. I'm just going to cut about, I don't know, five or six inches of it here. And I'm taking this leather and doubling it over right here. And then I'm just going to take my wire and I'm going to kind of lay it in with the leather right here and then just wrap and now this wrap I want to be pretty neat I want to create kind of a little coil here so my wires giving me issues and it is very hard <laughs> to get started but once you get it going it looks really cute it's a cute closure or a cute connection here. But it is very difficult to get started. And I'm going to hold it with my plier here. And just take it and try to wrap around. Holding it with my plier again. Once you get it wrapped around a couple of little coils here, it gets much easier. But it's hard to get it going. And it does help if you can hold this with your plier. Okay, so here I go. I've got a couple coils now. It's going to get a little easier to wrap. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, I have two little coils there. And I'm just going to try to grab it like right here and then continue to go up with my wrapping. You have to kind of get a hold of that wire. If you don't, then your whole thing is just going to twist in your hand. So try to grab a hold of your wire. I'm grabbing just right above where I'm making the coils. And it's a little bit easier that way. Okay. And if you, you know, if your leather gets a little 
messed up from your plier right there, you're going to be covering it anyway with this coil, so it's okay. Just try to be careful, but... And there it is, okay? So I've got my coil about, I don't know, I may want to go up just a little bit more. Let me look at it here. Yeah, I'm probably going to go up just a couple more wraps on it. So again, just grabbing with my plier right there. Go up a couple more. And that should be sufficient. Okay. So I do want to wrap around to the back of this little coil here. So I'm going to take my plier again and grab it and just go around. This is the front right here. I'm going to go kind of around to the back so it's not showing so much where the end is. And then I'm just going to take my cutters. I'm going to trim this little bit right here. And I'm going to trim this little bit right here. Don't cut your leather. Be careful. And then you can cut your leather. Okay. So there is our little coiled connection. And you can straighten it up a little bit if it's kind of, you know, mine had a little space there on the top. I'm just going to straighten it up a little bit. Make sure that it's tucked in so nothing's going to snag anything. And there we have it. And it's a nice little neat connection to our leather and it kind of mimics this down here just a little bit. So now let me measure. So I've got my ruler here and I'm going to go right at about 12 inches. So I'm just going to cut it right up here at the top and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, cutting a little piece of wire here. I always cut more wire than I need and then I, I save the little bits that I have left over but I always want to cut more just in case because I'm always afraid that I'm not going to have enough. <laughs> okay, so I'm doubling my leather over right here. And then I'm just going to take my wire and try to get a good little coil started here. And again, I grab it with my pliers right here and it makes it just a little bit easier to start it going around. It's still not easy, but it does help. <laughs> okay. And if you're twisting up, then just take your plier loose and grab it again right up here. It tends to want to twist with me as I coil for some reason. The leather does. Okay. It just takes patience. I think all wire wrapping takes patience. Um, and I'm not the greatest at it, but I'm getting better the more I do. It does take a lot of patience. I really admire people that wire wrap these big intricate things. I'm like, wow, I just, I don't understand how they do it. Okay, so I'm just coiling around here. And I want to make it even with my other one. So let me see how many coils I did on this one. One, two, three, four, about six. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So about one more time around. And I'll go around to the back here. And trim it off. Okay. Lay that part down right there against your leather. And I'm going to cut this piece off. And the reason I do this piece up the middle is just because it helps to secure the wire and to make everything tight and uh, you don't have to worry about your wire coming undone. But I do need to trim it a little bit closer than that. So let me see if I can get down in here and not cut my leather. Okay. And then I'm going to trim off this little tail of leather hanging out. Make sure that's tucked really good. And... There we have it. We've got our two little wire coils 
tucked on to our little rings. So now I'm just going to cut this leather equal with the other up here. Just going to pull them up together and cut this one right here. Okay. Now I've got my little fold overs and I'm just going to take them and lay the leather right in here. And then you just, I kind of grab it with the end of my nail right here. And then you just take these little pieces and just very gently fold them down over the leather. Okay. And there it is. And then I'll just trim this little bit right here. There we go. And do the same thing on the other side. Kind of fiddly to get a hold of sometimes. But these I like. I didn't used to like these, um, but the more I use them and have kind of figured out how to make them work, the more I like them. And the key is just to be kind of gentle and go slow <laughs> and not try to rush it. Okay, so now I'm going to hook my lobster on. Right on here. If your leather is still kind of blocking your hole, you can just kind of go around it there. Close that up, and then this one is just for my lobster to clasp onto. Close that up, and here we have it. A cute little pendant, and I love this. I like the way it turned out. I think it's super cute. Um, so let me go in here and put it on a form and I will be right back to show it to you. Okay, so here it is. Um, I think it turned out really cute and it's a little bit different, a little bit nautical, got a little bit of leather, a little bit of wire wrapping and the beautiful, beautiful beads from the bargain bead box. So um, if you're interested in subscribing to the Bargain Bead Box, I do have a coupon code. It is WENDY2. That will get you $2 off either your first month's box or your first purchase in their store. But it only works for one or the other. So keep that in mind. And I will have links for everything in the description box below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.